it's more it identifies more with the Middle East and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, Americans say Sinai. I actually don't know whether they're what? <laughs> what? Here is good. <laughs> now of course. <laughs> As I said, Egypt has a lot to see. I mean, but then. <laughs> Cute. Just you wait till my country comes up. So they say sometimes if you want to learn Arabic, learning. Mazr. Then notice how Egypt is saying Arab world, Arab world. Notice Mambo, 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 Mambo. Nito Mengi Natoka Kenya. Uh, hello guys, uh, my name is Mengi. I am from Kenya. Today I'm here to do a reaction to Geography Now Egypt. Geography Now Egypt. Uh, there will be lots and lots and lots of exciting stuff about this video. Oh, actually, before we get into it, first of all, guys, I'd like to ask you guys to. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, follow, follow, follow me on Instagram. Like, like, like the videos. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, click on the bell notification so I can get notified whenever I release a new video. Today's Swahili word is the name for Egypt in Swahili. The name for Egypt in Swahili is Misri. In Arabic, it's Mazr. In, in Swahili, Misri. It's not so different. It's not so different. It's really, it really is not so different. It's borrowed from the Arabic word. What is the next thing? What do we know about Egypt? First of all, guys, it's considered one of the oldest civilizations. Uh, they have the pyramids. Uh, the pyramids at Giza are some of the tallest pyramids in the world. Sudan has more pyramids and there are pyramids in Mexico as well, if you guys did not know. The Aztecs, uh, what was it the Aztecs? Uh, some of them, some of the people, they built pyramids. I don't know who it is. The Mayans, the Mayans might have been the ones who built the pyramids. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, who is it? Uh, but then, yeah, one of those people. Um, moving on. We know about Cleopatra, Nefertiti. Um, yeah, Cleopatra was famous uh, Egyptian. Was she the queen or the pharaoh or the pharaoh? I don't know what they call them when they're women. So Cleopatra, was it Mark Anthony versus who was the other guy? There's another guy, Julius Caesar. So there was Mark Anthony and Caesar. There's lots of pyramids, uh, lots of stuff like that. Uh, at one point, the kingdom, the Nubians, took over the took over Egypt for about 100 or 200 years, if I remember correctly. This is from the Sudan episode, by the way. Gamal Abdel Nasser, he helped uh, with the African independence movements across the continent. When North Africa was still very Pan-African, I think now it's different. North Africa affiliates more with the Middle East. At that time, Gamal Abdel Nasser, even countries like Algeria used to help with independence movements across the continent. So Gabal Abdel Nasser, uh, he actually helped Kenya kind of with its war of independence. And there is a street in Kenya's second largest city named after him. Uh, there is Lake Nasser. There's Lake Aswan uh, because of the Aswan High Dam. Is there Lake Nasser? There's, uh, there is Lake Nasser. Lake Nasser is because of the Aswan Dam. Yeah. That's the, that's the one. The capital of Egypt is Cairo. Cairo has been the capital for a long, 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 long time. There are very many tourist sites across the country. Oh, the second largest city is Alexandria. Egypt is home to about 100 million people, 90, 90 to 99 million people. Most of them live along the Nile. And then there was a whole Anglo-Egyptian thing. What was it? What, what was the name of the kings? Fuad? Was it King Fuad? Fuad, yeah. Fuad I of Egypt. Farouk of Egypt. Fawziya. This is the Ali dynasty. That's Egypt for you. There was the Suez Canal. Of course, you gotta mention that. Uh, Look, Suez is an important tourist city site. Cairo itself is a tourist site. Asham El Sheikh. And then those tributaries. They have very fertile land. Al Mahala. Stuff like that. All those. The Tanta or Tonto. Mansura. Is it Mansura? Man, okay, there are lots of stuff about Egypt. We will just dive into the reaction. Let the Geography Now guy teach us more about Egypt. So I will start playing the video in three, two, one. Hey guys, meet my friend Mohab. Oh, hey everyone, he's a real Egyptian. Uh, tell us, Mohab, Egypt, there's a lot more than just pyramids and mummies and stuff. Oh, are you kidding me? Come on, there's the Bibliotheca Alexandrina, Sharm el Sheikh, Luxor Aswan, the Opera House. <laughs> I've mentioned a lot of that. And Egypt is one of the most tourist-like countries in Africa. But this, this is the irony. It, going to Egypt for people from the African continent, it's not visa-free for many of people, many people from the African continent. 
it's visa free from if you're from like the Gulf, if you're from Europe, you can go there and get like I think a visa on arrival. But most of everyone else. So this is why I say that Egypt this these days it's more it identifies more with the Middle East and stuff like that. North Africa kind of identifies more with the Middle East. So even as the African continent says, oh, we're gonna get a visa-free zone for everyone. Anyway. We, we have reached Egypt from movies to toys to fashion magazines. The world has been saturated with iconic images of what it perceives Egypt to be for years. But with the help of my friend Mohab, we're gonna jump in and see what's really going on, aren't we? Yeah, that's the plan. That's hmm? the plan. <laughs> I don't really have to even say that much. Egypt has played such a powerfully historical role on the planet that it's almost difficult to say anything that hasn't been already covered trillions of times before. But I'll try. First of all, Egypt is located in the northeast corner of Africa connecting to Asia by a land bridge formed by the Sinai Peninsula on both the Red Sea and the Aqaba Gulf, classifying Egypt as a trans- If you guys are re really, really religious, you'll hear about Mount Sinai. And uh, yeah, Americans say Sinai. I actually don't know whether the original pronunciation is Sinai. Or Sina. Continental country, and technically the only Eurafrasian country, yes, that's actually a word, in the world if you really want to get into geopolitical semantics. Also, keep in mind, they operate the Suez Canal, which links the Mediterranean to the Indian Ocean via the Red Sea, which is like a big deal in terms of global economics. Egypt borders Libya to the west and Sudan to the south, sharing a tri-point border at the Hassanein Plateau. Egypt is divided into 27 governments, most of which are cradled around the Nile River Delta, with Cairo being the capital, the largest city in the entire Arab world, all the way in the southeast. Egypt has a little bit of a land dispute with Sudan over the Halei Triangle, which covers the Alba National Park as well as the Egyptian administered town of Halei. This place is de facto run by Egypt. This, of course, leaves the Birtawil trapezoid, which neither side claims or really cares about. 99% of the entire country lives on only 5.5% of the land most heavily concentrated around the Nile River Delta. I mean, it's not that hard to understand why. Woo! What? <laughs> is good <laughs> now of course <laughs> without water and then water with water we all know about the overexploited tourist traps the pyramids the sphinx the necropoli luxor memphis even the sunken city of Herculeon is gaining a ton of diver tourists however head off the beaten trail and you'll find a vast realm of ridiculous treasure troves few roads will take you inland to the incredibly sparsely populated new valley and matruh governance that lie western in the desert of egypt the largest inland highway will take you all the way from the siwa oasis to the incredibly remote potato and wheat crop discs of al wahed and al Ain. now if you can make it through check out places like Muzawaka tombs one of the only places in the world where you can actually touch real ancient mummies and if you really want to play a real-life desert I spy game see if you can find the various Samir Lama memorials the Abu Bala's shattered water pots and the abandoned World War II trucks and abandoned landing strip and those are just the man-made sites we haven't even covered the landscape yet but now we will as I said Egypt has a lot to see I mean but then also I feel like uh, East Africa also has a lot to see why don't you mention this in the Geography Now episode? And those are newer. Uh, the EAC guys. Uh. If you get a good look at Northern Africa, you'll notice that it's so much more than just sand. Oh yeah, there's an entire playground of eroded rocks, plateaus, and mountains that give you clues as to what the place used to look like, primarily when it was covered in grazelands thousands of years ago before desertification came in. I mean, <laughs> Wadi al-Hitan Valley has fossilized whale bones for crying out loud. Whale bones! Yes. <laughs> Cute. Just you wait till my country comes up. Woohoo! Driest place on earth! What up, Egypt? You ain't got nothing on me. But I do. These deserts contain rich geological gems. Head inland and you'll find the Al Farafara White Desert with strange eroded calcium rock formations caused by winds and dust storms. You'll also find extinct volcano calderas and dried up wadis. Egypt is currently the world's most heavily mined country with over 20 million active mines. That's like one mine for every 4.2 people in the whole country. Otherwise, the most distinguishable feature of Egypt would have to be the famous Nile River. Oh, the Nile River. Yeah. It's the longest in the world at over 6,600 kilometers that flows north draining into the you see the irony also is that the nile is associated with egypt but there are a bunch of other countries that are that originate with the nile and then there is sudan which has most of the nile 
Uh, okay. Yeah, the Nile provides Egypt with a unique feature that not many North African countries have, freshwater irrigation. Which, in return, has made Egypt the world's largest date and artichoke producer. Really? Wow. Okay. In the south of the Nile, you reach Lake Nasser, a reservoir that was created by one of the largest dams in the world, constructed in 1971 to control the floodings. Without the Nile, Egypt would look nothing like it does today. It's doubtful that they would have had the flourishing population and culture built up over millennia. They do have it, and we'll talk about it now. Yep. Hey, Mohab, what does it mean to be an Egyptian in the 21st century? What do you think? Jeez. Right. Uh, that's a heavy question. Yeah. I don't even know where to begin. With a population around 90 million, Egypt is the world's largest Arab country and the third largest in Africa after Nigeria and Ethiopia. At around 91%, the country identifies as ethnically Egyptian, whereas the remaining 9% come from a wide range of nationalities like Turks, Greeks, Bedouins, Berbers, and Nubians. In a sense, Egypt is kind of disputably considered the world's oldest nation. Yeah, speculated to have started somewhere around eh, 5,000-ish BC. Egyptians have gone through a millennia and millennia and millennia of kings, pharaohs, emperors, conquerors, sultans, empires, revolutions and presidencies which brings us to today oh yeah uh you guys ah i didn't want to talk about like the revolution and stuff like that those Mohammed morsi and now the president of egypt is abdel fatah is it al sisi yeah so egypt has so the current presidents they are very i think now egypt is more like a military-esque run country kind of i don't know how to explain it it's hard. Egypt is not only... And the military runs a lot of business in the country, kind of. But then some of it is like private business. Huge, but it's also kind of seen as like the center of the Arab world, the crossroads between North Africa and the Middle East. Therefore, Egypt has a lot on its plate. At somewhere around 80 to 90 percent, the majority of Egyptians are Sunni Muslims with a significant number adhering to the Sufi orders, which is why a lot of Turks feel perfectly comfortable living there. Otherwise, the second largest group are Christians, mostly Coptic Orthodox, with an incredibly small amount of Egyptian Jews left. Egypt is also the center of Arab media and cinema, pumping out about 75 percent of all arabic films since the early 20th century many film that like yeah i've heard of this um they do produce a lot of the movies and film so they say sometimes if you want to learn arabic learning mazhar egyptian arabic is it's not a bad idea at Medina Al Integral Alami studio in Cairo, which is considered the biggest multimedia studio in Egypt. Oh, so that's like the Arab Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Oh, Arab Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. Famous Egyptian actors like Adel Imam, Ahmed Zeki, Academy Award nominated actor in the United States, Omar Sharif, have graced the silver screen, making an internationally recognized name for themselves throughout the Arab world. They're very famous, aren't they? Yep. Yeah, everybody knows about them in the Arab world. Other notable icons would probably be Nobel Prize winners, Egyptian writer and author Naki Mahfouz. And but then notice how Egypt is saying Arab world, Arab world. Notice how the presenter says Arab world, Arab world, Arab world. Whereas most of the nations, I mean, yeah. Anyways, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Geographically, Egypt is an African, it's in Africa geographically. But these days, uh, that's what I feel like. Egypt doesn't bother too much of the African, like, you know, even look at the visa freedom for Egypt like going to Egypt is easier from people for people from the Gulf or for people from Europe or elsewhere not for most Africans and Peace Prize winner former president Anwar Sadat and generally Egyptians are kind of known as being kind of like the most athletic in the Arab world typically competing better than their cousins in the Olympics careful buddy I don't like where this is going and have probably the most prominent soccer team as well oh you did not just go there Arabic or Al Arabiya is the official language. However, as a former British protectorate, English and to a lesser extent French are widely taught and spoken, especially in the younger generation, as it is widely taught in schools and as a second language or third language and used in the tourism sector. Look at me. How do you think I learned English? Yeah, exactly. In remote areas, you can find languages like Berber, the Nubian languages, Domari, Beja, and the Bedouins speak a dialect of Arabic that's unlike any other. And although many claim that Egyptians speak standard Arabic, they have a whole set of distinct slang words that really aren't used anywhere else in the Arab world. Wahab, take it away. Ingis. عاش قوي زيك ايوه 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 انت جامد اخر حاجه يا نهار اسود وانت عندي دلوقتي مان جست واو 
Egypt does have some of its vices. Government Listen to that background music. Listen to that background music. Government policy also has trouble administering social security. Inflation rates have exploded and unemployment has increased in the past few decades. Primary education is mandatory and free, but typically underfunded and poorly monitored, and sometimes classrooms are overcrowded. Nonetheless, Egypt is a front runner in smart women. Today, there are more girls than boys in secondary education, and women make up 31% of government employees. And this is the part where we have to talk about the revolution. Mohab, can you summarize this because because, uh, I, yeah, you do it. You're the expert. On February 11th, 2011, Vice President Omar Suleiman announced that Mubarak would resign as president, turning power over to the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces. The Muslim Brotherhood took power in Egypt through a series of popular elections, with Egyptians electing Islamist Mohammed Morsi. However, Morsi's government encountered fierce opposition from secularists, and members of the military and mass protests broke out against his rule in June 2013. Morsi was deposed by a coup d'etat led by the Minister of Defense. General Abdel Fatah Sisi, who became a hero figure in the eyes of many Egyptians and was eventually elected president himself in 2014 election. According to the Egyptian government, Sisi was elected with 97% of the vote and he is the current president of Egypt. Awesome! Couldn't have said it better myself. Literally, I couldn't have. That's why Mohab is my friend. Speaking of friends! Before 2013, they were really good friends with Turkey and Qatar, which were close politically in their views regarding development, but then after 2013, ties were dramatically strained and they favored Saudi Arabia more, especially after they gave them a lot of moral and financial support. Keep in mind, the general public has a lot of different opinions on this and there is no uniform- This is why I was saying, like, uh, okay, you know what, let me just- Universal consensus. Then we get to Israel and Palestine. <laughs> After the peace treaty was signed in 1979 in Camp David, the whole world was watching and Israel agreed to give back the Sinai Peninsula that they occupied after the war. In return, they asked to just stop the fighting. This was the first time any Arab country signed any kind of agreement with Israel. Nonetheless, today, the agreement to them is just on paper and most Egyptians don't even quite favor Israel that much. So for now, it's just kind of like saying, I'll hold my ground until you do something. Keep in mind, this is not an anti-Semitic thing, but rather an anti-Zionist thing. Egyptians have a long history of cooperating with Jews. In terms of Palestinians, Egyptians totally support the Palestinian cause and they do share a border at the Gaza Strip. However, due to the potential drama, the border is closed indefinitely, rarely opening on special occasions. In terms of their best friends, Egyptians would probably say Sudan, the Emirates, and Kuwait. There have been no disputes with the Emirates and Egyptians love visiting and working there. They supported Kuwait in the Gulf War and Egyptians are treated nice. Yeah, like, um, I visited Kuwait. A lot of the people in the National Guard of Kuwait are actually from Egypt. Many of the workers at the banks and stuff like that in Kuwait are from Egypt. Nicely in Kuwait. So but then these days, because uh, of the pandemic, um, Kuwait is not accepting migrant workers anymore. You cannot understand the Arab world without understanding Egypt. Egypt is the central hub responsible for the development of an entire world of Eastern culture. And even after millennia, the story still goes on brightly as ever. Did I get that right in my head? <laughs> It's, it's like you're reading in my soul. Stay tuned! El Salvador <laughs> is coming up next. Okay, that part was interesting. Okay, that's geography now. Egypt, Mazar, Misri, and Swahili. Oh, so, yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, it was pretty much how I thought it was gonna go. Um, but I will say, Egypt is geographically in Africa. But I feel that these days, especially after Nasser and like all those people, these days Egypt is more affiliated with the whole Arab thing than it is affiliated with Africa. It's just in the African Union, just like that. But then not really, I don't feel like it's like, you know, actively part of it. Anyways, Asante Nisana, Shukran, I will see y'all later, later, later. They have a whole set of distinct slang words that really aren't used anywhere else in the Arab world. Mohab, take it away. Ingis, Ash, Awi, Zayk. Aywa, aywa, aywa. Inta gamid akhir haga. Yan har is swed. Oh, inta hanid edu Man, just. Wow. Egypt does have some of its.